Like I said, the biggest question among Christians is, does God still heal? Let me just say this before, as getting started. I don't believe in faith healing. I believe in divine healing. A lot of people have, are, the men that go around saying that you don't have enough faith, we're going to see if, if that's true or not. We're going to read the scriptures and see if that's true. Because faith healing is up to man or a man. It's up to you or a man. Where divine healing is strictly on God. The Lord does the healing. It doesn't matter. That has anything to do with us. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Divine healing is God just heals. And this is part of what this lesson is going to be on. Well, a lot of it. In Ephesians 2.8, it says, For grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Our faith is, is a gift from God. It's not our faith. So the faith we have, it's from God. So if they're saying you don't have enough faith, then partly what they're saying is God hasn't given you enough faith. Because He's the one that gives it. It says it right here. Our faith is not of ourselves. It's not our faith. It's God's faith. So it's actually, what they're saying is actually God's fault if you don't have enough faith. Because He's the one that gives it. James chapter 5 verses 14 through 18. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, in our church and other churches I've been in, they might have some churches that do this, but they have several churches that don't do this. Our church, we pray in groups. Like, we have what we call prayer warriors in our church and they'll pray for whoever's sick or the whole church prays for someone in church you know in the service the whole church will pray but do they do this do they call the elders of the church and anoint them with oil our church does it and like I said there's other churches that don't but I'm sure there's some churches that do do that and this is the way the Lord said to do it and in verse 15 it says and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall rise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, who's praying the prayer of faith? It's the elders. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer. Up here it says, let the elders pray. So the elders are the ones doing the praying. It don't say let the sick person pray. It says, who's, the elders are the prayer, are the prayer warriors here. Not the person who's sick. So it has, this faith has nothing to do with the person who's sick. Right here it says the elders. Call the elders of the church and let them pray. So the prayer of faith has to come from the elders. So if it's true what they say, then it's the preacher's fault if there's no healing. Well, the elder's fault. If there's no healing, it's the elder's fault. Right? They're, they're the one doing the prayer of faith. Not the sick person. You know, do you see that here? That's what it says. The elder will pray. He's the one that has the faith. So if they don't get healed, it's not the person who's sick. It's the person who's praying for them. That's what it says right here. And if he hath committed sins, that's what it says up here. And it's not talking about, it's not speaking about our sinful ways. Because that's for sure. We have them. There's no if. What he's saying here, if he hath committed sin. That means if his sickness is from sin. It's, it's what it's speaking about. I mean, if the sin has caused this sickness, which I'll explain more on that. There is sins that can cause sickness. It says, this is, divine, this is divine healing because it's done in the name of the Lord. It says right here, up there it says, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So it's coming, the, the healing is coming from the Lord. They had the faith that God gave them, but God did the healing. These men didn't do the healing. The above verses speak about sick people and the elders anointing them with oil and praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that's what heals them. Yeah. Not anointing them with oil. We're going to find that in this study that we're doing, there's different, this is just one of them. There's other formulas that they used in the Bible to heal people. Those were just formulas and we'll get on that later. <clears throat> but the next verse is speaking about us, the born again Christians, in verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. 
The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Much. It says, confess your faults one to another. Well, the scriptures plainly says that when you do that, we need to do it. Because in Matthew 18, 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So if, if there's anything between you and a brother, you got to get right with it. It also says it in Matthew 6, verses 16 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And if you don't forgive us our trespasses, how can we pray for a brother? Once you confess your sins to your brother or your sister, now you are healed. Like it says back here, now you're healed. So now you can pray for them. Because, I mean, sin is a sickness. Yeah. Okay? Sin, sickness, death, it's all the same thing. So now you can pray for your brother or sister when you've, once you've made things right. And he says, now you're healed. Now you're healed where you can pray. That's what he's saying. The official fervent prayer of a righteous man. Who is a righteous person? It tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Speaking about Jesus. Who knew no sin. That we, the Christians, we might be made the righteous of God in him. So we're the righteous. That's what it says. Now in verse 17, Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now one thing we see that we're talking, I'm teaching in the New Testament right here, but what's it take me to? It takes me to an example in the Old Testament. So we need the Old and the New Testament. They go together. I'm, I'm just throwing that in there because people who don't believe that we don't need the Old Testament, well, right here they're connected. You have some who preach that if you're not healed, it's because you're not walking with the Lord. Well, what did God say about Job? He said Job was the greatest of all men. That's what he said, Job. He was the greatest of all men. And look what happened to him. Job was sick for a good while before the Lord healed him. So this meaning, this, this, this quote they say, some preachers, well, if you're not healed because you're not walking with the Lord, Job, God, God said, Job was the greatest of all men. So apparently he was walking with the Lord, right? right. And look what happened to him. So why did, I mean, how can they make that comment? Men who make comments like that, apparently they don't read the Bible. Especially or they just read parts of the Bible. Especially when it's all some obvious like that. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I'm showing it to you, right? It's right there in the Bible. We're going to see that in the Bible, the majority of the people weren't even saved. They got healed. They weren't even born again. They weren't Christians. A lot of people in the Bible that were healed were lost. Were, were, was faith? Where's their faith? They didn't have any. God healed them. This is called God's grace. He healed the, lo he healed the lost people to show how, how good he is. And hopefully, and we're going to see, that people would get saved through his healing. Now, we're going to see... In the time of Jesus, and we're going to read the scriptures, and it says he healed all. Jesus was shown who he was. He was shown the power of God at that time. All right? We're going to see that some more. Jesus was just a man doing God's will. And look at Jesus. He had a perfect walk with God. And look what happened to him. I'm sure they had some people saying, how can God let this happen to him? Well, in Matthew 26, verse 39, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. This is Jesus. Saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus as a man was saying, Lord, if there is any way, let this pass from me. And Jesus knew what he was getting ready to go through. And he said, Lord, if there is any way, let this pass from me. Because Jesus knew. But what did he say? He said, not my will, Lord. Let your will be done. That's something we gotta. That's something we have to learn. We have to learn. Uh, our will might not be the same of what God's will is. And then when it's not, we're ready to blame Him for whatever we were praying for, and it didn't happen. We have to be like Jesus was right here. He's, he said, "Lord, this is what I want. If it's possible, this is what I want. 
but your will be done, not mine. That's, that is one thing Christians don't know how to pray. They don't know how to say, let your will be done. Your will, Father. I don't care how bad I want this person here. They're sick. I don't care how bad I want them here. But if it's time to take them, then your will, let your will be done. And I will understand. Because I know your ways are not my ways. I know your thoughts are not my thoughts. But we don't seem to think that way. When people get sick and God doesn't heal them. Remember, he never said that Christians weren't going to get sick or die. Matthew 5.45 That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So whatever happens to lost people, it's going to happen to us too. There's no difference. He didn't say things were going to be better on our end, that nothing bad was ever going to happen. The only, thing, the only difference is we have the Lord to be with us when we go through these trials, tribulations, whatever. That, when it's raining... We have the Lord with us. If there's a storm, we have the Lord with us. Also in Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time were not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There are different kinds of suffering we're going to go, go through. We're going to experience. One of, them is, one, of them is, one of our sufferings is going to come from man. But the verses say, but our glory comes from God. The second kind of suffering... What we're going to go through is just being here on this earth. But our glory will be in heaven. And the third kind of suffering will come from being in these corrupt, dying bodies. Even though we're born again, we're still in these dying bodies. That's part of the sin. Our bodies are not going to live forever. That was part of the sin. We're in these dying bodies. But our glory will come when we get our perfect imperishable bodies amen, amen. <laughs> that day's coming that day's coming but these are different kinds of ways we're going to suffer so remember there is teaching that some of our sicknesses are just something we're going to go through because of Adam and Eve because of what Adam and Eve did we're going to have to pay for it I know that some of you aren't going to believe this but sometimes it's good that we get sick I didn't say this it's sometimes that we it's good that we get sick, but the Lord did. If you look at Psalms one nineteen verse seventy one, it says, "It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn Thy statutes." That's what God says. It's good for me that I have been afflicted. Also in Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, that love God. So a lot of times. I mean, you've heard it said before. Sometimes the people can't look up until they're laying on their back. So I'm sure you have people who, who get sick, they're flat on their back, and they get saved. They get born again. So it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn that statue. It's good that this happened to me so I can learn who you are, Lord. So sometimes, I mean, I wouldn't go up to a person and say, well, it's good that you're sick. I would, you know, you don't say that. But... The end of it, if this person gets saved from, from the sickness, amen, right? And like the Lord says in Romans 8, 28, which I just read it, and we know that all things, all things work together for the good to them that love God. So even if we're sick, all things work together for the good. If a Christian gets sick and just say they die, well, the Lord's going to use that for His glory. Somebody could be saved off of that. Seeing how strong this Christian was and still believed, even at the time, at the end, they still believed in God. That could save somebody. Somebody could see that and say, God is for real. They, he has to be. If this person is like that, he's got to be real. Now, there's reasons why God was healing everyone, like I said before. We're going to look at the reasons Jesus was healing everybody at that time when he was here. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with different diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils. 
and those which were lunatics and those that had the palsy and he healed them. Why did he heal them? It says it right there. That a fame, meaning he wanted to be known. He wanted people to see the power of God. That's what Jesus was here for. To show the people who they needed. To show the people they needed to repent and give their life to the Lord. So when he says it heals all the sick, yeah, at that time, it healed all, he healed all the sick. He wanted to be recognized, widespread recognition, that's what he wanted in that whole area. In Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. All that were brought to him in this chapter, chapter 8, were healed. They brought him a leopard, he healed him. A Roman soldier's servant, he healed him. Peter's mother-in-law was healed. And those who were possessed by devils were healed. Again, in this chapter, he healed all of them because he wanted the people to know the power of God. He wanted to show his divine mission and why he was here. Okay? That's why we got to get the whole picture here. You know, well, God was healed everybody back then. Why doesn't he do it now? Well, we're going to learn. That's what we're going to learn. Why did he heal everybody back then, but he's not healing everybody now? That's what we're here to learn. And right now I'm showing you, he wanted to show the power of God. He wanted to show his divine mission on why he was here. God had him on a divine mission here on earth. Back in Matthew 3, God wanted Jesus to be revealed to the people to show them that he was the only way, the only one who could save them, and that he was the Son of God. Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God, God himself, wanted the people to know who Jesus was. Not only did he use Jesus in healing people, but he, he said it himself. This is my beloved son. He said this to the people. In verses 5 and 7 of this chapter, it says that John was preaching to people from Jerusalem, all of Judea, and the entire region around about Jordan, and to the religious leaders also. So all, all, all these people heard what God said. Jesus healed because he was on a mission from God. And it says it in John 3.34. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. God didn't limit Jesus. What it's saying right here. God didn't limit Jesus. Jesus didn't have a limit on who he can heal. Alright. There was no uh, measure on him, meaning there was no limit. Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Again, there were no limits to the Spirit's power working through him. Jesus was, a, was perfect while he was here. He was 100% man, but he was walking in the Spirit with God. And he always knew what the Father wanted. Because he always had his eyes on the Lord. He always knew what he wanted, and the Lord was always showing him what was what was coming ahead. He, the Lord, we believe in visions. Well, the Lord gave Jesus visions on what's on what's to come. That's because he was able to see him because he walked with him. Right. He walked with the Lord. Luke seven twenty two. Then Jesus answering said unto him, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are risen, to the poor the gospel is preached. Again, Jesus wants the people to know. I'm going to show that over and over. He's doing this on purpose. He's healing them for a reason. It was in Matthew 14:14, 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. That was another reason. Jesus had compassion on us. That's why he came down here. He had compassion on us. Jesus wasn't a cold person with no feelings. That's why he died on the cross for us. That's why when he seen 
the, the sick. He had compassion on them and healed them. And he also showed it in Matthew 14, 19 through 21. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve basketfuls. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. Here he didn't only show who was performing his miracle in front of all the people, but he also showed his love. He showed the miracle, but he also was shown his love at the same time. Shown his miracle, again, like I said, shown the power of God. But at the same time, he was shown his love, his compassion toward the people. Do we have men who can do that today? No. You had a lot of people, well, you, you had mainly the religious leaders saying no, he wasn't. And they called him, they even called him the devil at one time. He was crazy, he was, they even called him the devil. This was religious leaders, but the people could see. They heard of his miracles and some of them saw the miracles. And the people believed, but the religious leaders are the ones who was, no, he's not for real. Like I said, they even called him a devil at one time. Matthew 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Again, Jesus felt so sorry for the people because they were lost. He saw their hearts. And they needed a savior. That's what he. That's what he was here for. He wanted the people to come to him, not, not for his glory, for the glory of his father. Romans five eight. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It didn't say that we were born again. It says while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Not only did he heal the people from their physical sickness, he also gave them a chance to have the spiritual heal, uh, healing by dying on the cross for us. He loved us. He loved us when we didn't love him. While we were still sinners, even those people who were saying crucify him, crucify him, he died for those people. The soldiers who, who, who nailed him to the cross, the king that said to put him to death, the religious leaders who wanted him dead, he died for them too. He died for them hoping that they would repent from their evil ways. He loved all sinners and he died for them. He also healed so people could be saved. These are all the reasons Jesus was healing at, at everyone at this time. John 4 verses 46 through 53. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he had, where he had made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The people weren't listening to his message of salvation. They, folk, they were focusing on the miracles he was doing. That's what they were doing. That's why he told them, except you see signs and wonders, you're not going to believe. If I wasn't doing all this miracles, you wouldn't believe. Right. And we have that still. We see signs and miracles. But he, he already said, hey, because you see this, that does not really make you a believer. Because even back, back here we, where he was healing people and feeding the 5,000 signs and wonders. People look for signs and wonders. Sorry. That's not what saves you. The Bible plainly says what saves you. What saves you is when you get drawn by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what saves you. When the Holy Spirit draws you. That's the Father. In verse 49, The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down here. My child die. Because he thought Jesus had to be there to heal him. Because he kept saying, Come down, come. You know, He wanted Jesus to go with him. In verse 50, Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. He didn't have to be there. All Jesus had to do was speak the word. 
you could tell that Jesus was getting frustrated with the people because of the way he told the man about the signs and the miracles and then he told the man go your way the man kept saying come come and Jesus finally said no go your way your son liveth go your way your son liveth I don't have to go with you verse 51 and as he was now going down his servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth then acquired he of them the hour when he began to amend and they said unto him yesterday at the at the seventh hour the fever left him so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him thy son liveth and himself believed in his whole house so Jesus was healing why one of the reasons this man got saved in his house yeah. that's another reason Jesus was healing so people could get saved the ministry of Jesus was not just to heal people but to get them to turn to the Lord that's what it was his mission was he wasn't just here just to heal people and do these miracles and go on his way he was here so people could turn to God give their life to the Lord he wanted Jesus is God's will that everybody be saved that's his will but we know that's not going to happen because the word of God says it back in Matthew 8 verses 16 and 17 that it might be fulfilled was spoken by the uh, by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our firmities that's meaning diseases our sufferings and our sorrows and he bared our sickness that's what it says it says the same thing in Hebrews 4 15 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin like I said Jesus faced the same thing we faced he wept so he had feelings just like us he, he had the same thing we'll find that in Isaiah 53 Verses 3 to 3 6, that is the same. This verse was fulfilled. What it says up here, it says in Isaiah 53 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as our, were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now the way the Living Bible, I'm going to translate this in the Living Bible. <clears throat> so we can better understand it. The Living Bible says, And we thought his troubles were punishment from God. A punishment for his own sin. That's what it says right here in verse 4. In verse four. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our souls. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. They thought it was... God was punishing Jesus for something he had did, his own sins. That's what verse 4 means. Then verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquities of us all. Now, if you were to read these verses before reading the New Testament, would you come to the conclusion that he's speaking about salvation, taking care of our sins, and not a physical healing? Yeah, right here, he's right here. These verses are talking about a spiritual healing. He's not talking about a physical healing, but you, you got some people who use this to show it's a by his stripes we're healed. By his stripes were healed. It's talking about a spiritual healing. It's not talking about a physical healing. Like I said, if you just read these verses without reading the New Testament, where would you get from this? Oh, it's talking about physical healing. It's not there. Plainly, it's talking about a spiritual healing. Did he take on the sins of the world so we could have physical healing? No. Which doesn't save us. Physical healing doesn't save us. It was because of, our, of a spiritual healing he wanted us to have. So there's healings. And the main healing is the spiritual healing. You know, we pray for people who have physical illness. And we pray that the Lord heal them. We're talking about lost people. We pray for lost people who are sick. Well, before we even pray for that, if we know it's a lost person, we need to pray for their spiritual healing. What's the use of getting a physical healing if they're spiritually dead? Right. Huh? 
we need to we need to read the whole Bible and see who our Father is. We need to understand these these scriptures that are that that I'm reading to you. I'm reading them, but they're from the Lord. They're from the Lord, and it's really the Lord has blessed me. He has blessed me. He has showed me. Show these guys. Show my brothers and sisters. Show my children on there. The Bible, my words are not hard to understand. Man has, has made them hard to understand. But they're really not hard at all. He didn't make it hard to understand. That's not our God. If you know anything about our God, He's not going to make it hard for us to understand. He's going to make it easy for us to understand. But we have men who... Twist who around they twist the, up, they twist the scriptures, they, they twist the verses, and they... They pretty much make them mean what they want them to mean. And I've told you before, the scripture says that the scriptures are not up for private interpretation. If I don't know what a verse means, I'm not going to tell you, well, I think. My think ain't worth a flip. My think is not the word of God. Amen? Amen. So that's why I give you scriptures after scriptures after scriptures to show you the word of God. Not what Jesse thinks. What Jesse thinks could lead you the wrong way. I said in Matthew 27, 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, it's to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the reason God had forsaken him, do you ever thought about that? Why did God forsake Jesus, his son? It's because Habakkuk 1, 13, it says, thou art, talking about God, thou art of pure eyes than the whole evil and can't look upon iniquities, sin. What he's saying is God has nothing but pure eyes and he can't look down on evil. And what did Jesus do on the cross? He took on the, he took on the sins of the world. And when he did that, the Father could no longer look at him. So that's why he says, My God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? I mean, everything, everything that Jesus went through. It says he didn't even look like a man. He was tortured, suffered. Through all that, I think this is the hardest thing he had to say. If you're a born-again Christian and you know God has left you, that would devastate me. Yeah. So out of all that that Jesus went through, the whippings, the torture, everything he went through. The hardest part of what he went through was this right here. Lord, my father. Just to have God turn his back on you. Oof. This had how everything. This had to be the hardest part for Jesus. Let's look at it with another verse. First Peter 2.24 Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed same thing we just read in Isaiah 53 5 with his stripes were healed Peter is shown death to sin and becoming alive to righteousness as a spiritual healing a spiritual healing we have to get this right we got to understand there's a spiritual healing and there's a physical healing and we seem to get them confused. We seem to put physical healing with spiritual healing. We gotta read the scriptures. We gotta read what it says. Up above, up below. You get. You need to read the whole Bible so you can get the whole picture. That the healing here is spiritual, not physical. Isaiah nor Peter was shown that his suffering and his death was for a physical healing. They never. Isaiah, what it says in the Old Testament, and what Peter says in the New Testament. It, neither one of them was shown that the Lord Jesus' suffering and death was for a physical healing. Right. It was for a spiritual healing. Now, I am going to show that we have a gift of healing. There is a gift of healing, and I'm going to get on that later. But right now, I just want to show you why, why was the Lord healing everybody? And He's not doing it today. Well, this is the reason. He wanted to show the power of God. And God wanted people to know who he was because he even said, look, this is my beloved son. God was even telling the people, this is my son. And the religious people were there. Religious people heard that. It says that they were there. But when, he's, when, when Jesus finally said that, yes, he was the son of God, 
they say he was blaspheming. When they heard God himself say, this is my beloved son. So, remember this. I'm going to stop right here. Because I don't want to start the next phase. And just and not finish. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. But these verses plainly show there was a reason why God was healing everyone. All at that time. Amen.